that I love you with my whole heart and my entire being, and if you did not already know this, then I have failed you as a parent. I'm ready to express not only my love for you, but for the world as a whole. Did you know that children are innately curious? They constantly question the intricacies of the world. They are persistent in their questioning. They see possibility in everything. They have the questions that no one is able to answer, and because of this, society tears them apart. I stay awake late at night, hoping that you will cling to this one part of your being with all of your might. I want you to hold steadfastly to your curiosity, because it, it, it is important that you question what you are told, question authority, and question the world as a whole. If you come to the conclusion that school is not a place that you thrive in, it doesn't matter. Learning begins the moment we take our first breath. It does not cease to be until we take our last. So why bother forcing something that is so beautiful when it happens naturally? Some of the most important aspects of learning happen far beyond the walls of a classroom. You do not need to believe what others tell you just because they are your teachers, your coaches, your peers, or even your parents. I do not want you to blindly believe what you are told. Rather, I want you to think critically each and every minute of every day. I had the opportunity to teach a class of youth, a class full of overwhelmingly eager students, students who desired to learn from me of all people. I must tell you that I was conflicted, so incredibly conflicted about the morality of it all. You too will come across plenty of conflict in your life, but you will become a stronger person because of it all. The students in my class were enthusiastic, not so much because I was there, but because I was an outside influence to them and a big one. I was white and they were not. I had traveled and they had not. I spoke English and they did not. I felt like an imposing force that had come to wreak havoc on their classroom. I was teaching them my language when I had not even bothered to learn theirs. They were required to sacrifice their learning habits day in and day out just to accommodate me, yet they were still enthusiastic and they took everything that I said as being the truth. I suppose that they believed that everything I said must be truthful, as I was the authority figure in the classroom. But that is not what I wanted them to believe, and that is certainly not what I want you to believe. I want you to realize that different does not necessarily mean better, nor does it necessarily mean that it is an imposition of some sort. It is up to you to absorb the information, the opinions, and the facts that are thrown your way, so that you can come up with your own conclusions based on your experiences. Along the way, I have had strangers, teachers, friends, and family members to guide me in thinking for myself and in developing my own conclusions. I hope more than anything that I can be one of those many individuals for you. Now I want to tell you, do not be afraid of your emotions, whether society tells you that you have too many or too few. The emotions that you have are yours alone, and no one in their right mind can tell you how you should be feeling at any particular instant. Be open with your emotions only to the extent in which you feel comfortable doing so. Do not be fooled into thinking that you should ever be feeling a certain way in a certain instant. We have far less control over our emotions than we realize. And if we cry out loud, an emotion is a spontaneous state of mind, not one that comes about with conscious effort. You should not expect certain emotions, nor should you fight the ones that you happen to have. Do not be afraid to love freely. And when I say this, I mean do not be afraid to love yourself and others with all your heart. I will be honest with you in saying that I used to be unsure and perhaps a little bit afraid of my emotions and emotions in general. I had an aversion to them because I did not know what to make of them. I've never been openly emotional and I think that is who I am as a person, but at the same time I have to an extent pegged emotions as being weak for myself, which is strange because when I see others being openly emotional in public, weakness is the furthest thing from my mind. At times, I allowed society to convince me that my emotions were not sufficient enough for the specific circumstances and that I did not feel enough. I used to be afraid of my emotions until I realized that it was hindering my ability to live freely. I want you to ignore societal consciousness. I want you to feel what you feel, and I want you to live freely. Sometimes the world can be quite an exhausting place, and it is perfectly acceptable to shy away from it for a while. There is nothing wrong with desiring to be completely and utterly alone at times, and there is certainly nothing wrong with enjoying your own company above that of others every now and again. When surrounded by the outside world, I do not want you to feel the pressure to talk when you do not feel comfortable doing so, nor do I want you to hold back when you well and truly have something to say. There is no need to edit yourself before you speak, but there is nothing wrong with doing so either. You need not label yourself as an introvert or an extrovert, rather become both or become neither. This past year, 2014 to 2016, I was crazy enough to commit to traveling the world for seven months with the same 20 people. We lived together, we worked together, we learned together, we cooked together, we cleaned together, we played together. 
validation of others, in the laughs, and in the hugs. I just want you to see the beauty in camaraderie and the beauty in exchange. In life, there is no reason for you to seek reassurance or validation from those around you because the only person that you ever need on your side is yourself. If they do not respect you for it, it is their loss, not yours. It is easier said than done to go against societal conventions because we may indeed be ostracized, but in the long run, It is not the end of the world if you do seek reassurance from others. Just do not let it fog up your lens of reality or betray values that you hold in high esteem. In the past, I have personally liked to make myself think that I do not give a damn about what anyone else thinks about me. But perhaps I'm in denial. Perhaps I'm warping my sense of reality. I do not know that it is possible to separate oneself completely from that of society. But it is possible to break free from some societal conventions. I mean, I typically dress for comfort rather than buying into claims to be fashionable. I wear jeans, t-shirts, and lounge pants often, very, very often. <laughs> when I dress up, I try and do it for myself and something that I'm comfortable wearing. And in addition to that, society is almost set up to tell you, me, and everyone else that the thing to do is one, go to school, go to college, and get a job. And we tell, I took a gap year, so that makes sense. I'm still trying to find out what I'm comfortable doing because of society, what I'm comfortable Perhaps I will never be able to fully separate the two. I hope that you too attempt to find comfort within the world and comfort within yourself. Never in a million years allow society to constrain on who you are as a person because of your gender, your age, your sexuality, your race, or any other aspect that is a core part of you. Your capabilities are limitless, but only if you believe them to be. I cannot shield you from the harsh realities of the world, but rather I can give you guidance unfortunate occurrence that I'm able to use the words shield and world in the same sentence because the world should not be a place to fear but a place to love. It would be irresponsible of me to tell you not to be afraid because there's plenty of hurt in the world but I do not want you to be blinded or jaded by all of this. You can choose to focus on the greed, the envy, the lust, the gluttony, the pride, and the hatred that exist but I am imploring you to recognize around the world to look directly at myself and to look directly at those around me. I wanted to more tangibly tie together the harsh realities that I mentioned in the world with the joyous moments in order to come back with a more coherent picture of what exists beyond my bubble. I yearn for something more. I desire to find my sense of reality amongst the chaos of everyday life. I saw the world. I experienced the world. I lived in the world. I hiked the Sokentek summit as the rain pelted my face gasping leaps set forward that I willed myself to take. I crammed into the back of a rickety green truck with numerous other people, all in a massive black work suit getup, as we careened down the road on the way to our work site while the wind whipped in our faces. I stood at the edge of a bridge, viewing the river below, and then I was falling, with only a thin cord tethering me to this world. I walked through the trash-strewn streets of Jaipur as a small child trailed me, asking for a sliver of food bit of money, or really just anything. I was decked out in a party hat, surrounded by my friends as I lounged about a massive pile of food prepared for our picnic at Anger Walk. It was dark and silent as I eagerly leaned down to watch a turtle shoot clumps of sand out of the earth in preparation to lay her eggs while I listened to the ebb and flow of the waves. I took a cable car up a mountain, sat with my second family while playing a game and laughing as the stunning Indian sun set behind it was the first night in Thailand as I stood with wonder, staring at the sky, a sky that gave off the light of, hundred, of hundreds of lanterns floating up and up and up until they were no longer visible. I walked somberly through the killing fields in Cambodia, where a massacre occurred, where a genocide occurred, where humanity folded. I stepped out of a plane, and I was falling, falling, falling toward the Indian Ocean until the chute opened and I hovered above the quiet and still, floating back to where I came from. I sat in a classroom in India, jam-packed with enthusiastic children of all ages, pushing and shoving one another in an attempt to greet me with a hand.